What's going on everybody, it's Joel here and today we're going to be doing the review of the Nike Metcon 8. All right, so the Nike Metcon 8 is not even up on the Nike USA website at the time of this review. I purchased these on Dick's Sporting Goods maybe about a month and a half ago now, and then they disappeared for a while, but pretty recently came back in stock, and that's the only place in North America or in the United States that you can get men's sizes for the Metcon 8. You can also get three women's colorways on Nike.com. Those are actually up, and if you're a guy and you wanted to size up, you're gonna need to go one and a half sizes up for a women's size if you wanted to do the translation to men's size. So the Metcon 8 is basically an updated model of the Metcon 7. They're the same life cycle as shoes, they're using the same tooling, which is why there's a lot of similarities in the actual silhouette of the shoe. And if you watched my review from last year, you'd know that I really liked the Metcon 7. I picked it for one of my top five training shoes of 2021, and I still think that it is one of the best training shoes and CrossFit shoes of all time. With all that said, the Metcon 8s have a hard act to follow. And when these were first leaked, they were met with a lot of criticism, and it really just goes into the way that the shoe looks. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't actually care for the way that the Metcon 8 looks. I mean, by now, the look has grown on me a little bit more, but it is definitely a polarizing look. But to be fair, pretty much when any new Metcon or new training shoe comes out, people are gonna hate on it, and the haters are usually the loudest. One thing that I think that we definitely could have lived without was the giant Metcon branding in the medial side. I remember when the Metcon 5, like Metal Strong colorway came out with that on it. I don't remember people actually liking it on that colorway, so it's a wonder why they brought it back with the Metcon 8. But for some colorways, I think it blends in a little bit better, like the black one, it's not so bad because it kind of blends into the gray overlay, and then on the green model as well, it kind of just blends into the overlay there. On some of them, it's a completely different color and it just sticks out really, really badly. And I hope that some of the later colorways or special editions kind of just do away with that logo. But since we're on that topic, let's start with the upper of the Metcon 8 and what's changed from the Metcon 7. So this year they're using what they call a lightweight mesh, there's really nothing more descript than that, and that's in comparison to the chain link mesh that they brought back from the free X Metcon 1 for the Metcon 7 and the free Metcon 4. The lightweight mesh is pretty much just a standard mesh material in comparison, but what they've done was armored it up with TPU overlays basically throughout the whole shoe. So on the medial side, you do not have the rope guard anymore. Replacing that is just a heavier overlay that extends all the way across the toe box and it gets double layered on the lateral side with a more kind of sparse overlay that carries on through to the swoosh where there's actually a very hefty chunk of overlay that connects into the swoosh there, which is kind of weird because it's kind of like the rope guard that was on the medial side, and now it's on the lateral side. It's not nearly as thick though. And then around the heel counter, there is more overlay, and then there is some exposed mesh that you can see at the ankle collar. The Metcon 8s are noticeably more flexible than the Metcon 7s, and I'm not sure if that's just because of the change in the upper, but what I will say is that the upper does feel a little bit more airy than the more form-fitting one that was on the Metcon 7. Another change that they made to the upper of the Metcon 8 is the way that the lace lock works. On the Metcon 7s, you had to fold the tab down and then secure it that way over the laces. Now, you would tie your laces inside of the lace lock or you can tie them and then put them in there and then pull the tab back over the tongue. And I think it just gives the shoe a cleaner aesthetic. Another thing that they improved on the construction of the Metcon 8 is because there's no more rope guard on the medial side, the flywire tabs are actually built in to the shoe and you have a more standard 
eyelid. On the Metcon 7s, that was one of the main points of failures because of how rigid that rope guard was and the way that the tabs would set up, they would eventually pull away from the inside part of the medial side of the shoe. So I think durability in at least that area should be better on the Metcon 8. Another slight tweak that they made with the Metcon 8 is there's a little bit less cushioning at the Achilles part of the shoe and that actually helps the shoe out in terms of heel slip. I noticed that when doing lunges, my heel was less prone to slipping out of this shoe than it was on the Mekon 7, which to be honest with you, wasn't that big a deal to me on the Mekon 7, but it's definitely less noticeable on the Mekon 8. The sock liner is the exact same one that you'll find on the Mekon 7, which is not necessarily a bad thing because I thought it was pretty good. It's comfortable, breathable. It's about three millimeters thick. And if you're somebody that's coming from the Mekon 1 to Mekon 6, with the drop-in midsole, you'll be happy to find out that you can use custom orthotics with your Metcon 7s or your Metcon 8s. Now talking about the midsole of the Metcon 8, it is still React Foam like the Metcon 7s was, but I will say that the forefoot feels a little bit thinner than it did on the Metcon 7. The heel of the shoe feels almost exactly the same. The midfoot of the shoe is quite a bit more flexible, but I'll get back to that a little bit later. We still have the React Foam back here at the heel part. We have a little stabilizer clip right above the Hyperlift. And then we, of course, have the Hyperlift insert, which makes these shoes feel almost like a lifter at the heel part of the shoe. Torsionally, there's really no flexing it, and there's almost no compressing that Hyperlift insert. There is still the little heel clip at the back there, so you can do handstand push-ups. And the rubber on the shoe seems to be the exact same as it was on the Metcon 7. We have raised lateral and medial sidewalls to grab the rope. And when I used these for rope climbs, I thought that they were still some of the best shoes that I had ever used for climbing the rope. I was not missing the medial guard at all. The toe box of the shoe has some flex grooves at the forefoot, a pretty big break where the shoe wants the flex right at the metatarsal area. And I think the toe box on the shoe is noticeably more flexible than it was on the Metcon 7. So since the shoe is on the same tooling as the Metcon 7, the drop is the same at four millimeters. I know I was unsure of the drop at the time of the Metcon 7 review, but I did confirm it with Nike that these shoes and the Metcon 7s still run a four millimeter drop. And one thing that has changed for the better, but only slightly is the weight of the Metcon 8s in a size 10 were 12.3 ounces in comparison to the 12.6 of the Metcon 7. It's a small change and it really could just vary from shoe to shoe, but it definitely is a change for the better. So when going to size your Metcon 8s, I'm gonna recommend that most people should go with their normal Metcon size. If it worked for you before, it's probably gonna work for you with the Metcon 8. Though I will say that the Metcon 8 is not as wide foot friendly as the Metcon 7 was because they did change the way that the toe box is shaped. It's a little bit more narrow and a little bit more pointy. Some people are gonna like that more, like me personally, because I have Morton's toe. It just gives me a little bit more room for my second toe to fit inside of the shoe. Whereas on the Metcon 7, it did feel a little bit more cramped for me because of the more squarish toe box. If you have a wider, more square set of toes, I'm gonna say that the Metcon 7 is probably still the better shoe for you. These shoes fit most similarly to the Metcon 4 and the 5. There's really no arch in these shoes, so I think if you have flat feet, they're gonna fit you just fine, and the emission of the rope guard in the medial side is gonna make it so that there's less pressure against your arches. And one thing that I also like is that the tongue stays in place, it doesn't go flying around like some of the other training shoes out there. If you're coming from Reebok's Nanos, I'm gonna recommend that you're probably gonna need to go up half a size. Usually Nanos fit a little bit longer and a little bit wider. And just for reference, I wear the Nano 11 and 12 in a size nine and a half. I wear Metcon 8s in a size 10, and I wear Metcon 7s in a size 10 as well. Though, like I said before, it does require a little bit more break-in for me to wear those comfortably than the Metcon 8s. If you wanted to buy a training shoe to run any kind of longer distances, then do not buy the Metcon 8s. These are terrible running shoes. 
I took them out on a two mile run just to test and because I'm kind of a masochist and I thought that the Metcon 8s were terrible. Like maybe even worse than the Metcon 7s. After the first mile, I felt like I was getting shin splints and I wanted to end it there, but I went on for another mile to see if it would get any better and it did not. I think that these shoes are pretty terrible running shoes. And they should be okay for most of the stuff that you'll find in the typical wad. If you're like only doing 100 meters, 200 meters, 400 meters at a time, and you get a little break in between the runs, then I think they're gonna do just fine. But when it comes to anything more than a mile, these are pretty terrible. And despite having a more flexible toe box, I think that they actually might be worse than the Metcon 7s because they feel like there's less cushion at the forefoot of the shoe, so impact is pretty harsh. And that carries over to things like double unders and box jumps, like if you're rebounding your box jumps, I noticed that I was getting a lot of impact in my forefoot when I was landing, doing box jump overs, and doing like longer sets of double unders. Still, I will say that responsiveness in these shoes is top notch. I think that because there is a little bit less midsole cushioning, or it feels like there's a little bit less midsole cushioning, that they're a little bit closer to the ground and some people are actually gonna like that about this shoe over the Metcon 7. It does feel that you do get a little bit more ground feel in the Metcon 8 in comparison to the 7s. And when it comes to stability, I thought that the Metcon 8s were still some of the best training shoes that you can do your lifting movements in. But I don't think that they are as good as the Metcon 7s. And that's mainly because they just feel a little bit less balanced than the 7s did. The heel on the shoe is not flexible at all. It's very rigid, and that's one of the things that I did like about the Metcon 7. It's almost like having a lifter in terms of stability without actually having a lifter on and having a really elevated heel. Torsionally, the heel on the shoe, it doesn't flex, it doesn't compress. I mean, it might a little bit, but most people are not gonna notice it. I definitely have not noticed it. But where the Metcon 8s kind of falter in comparison to the Metcon 7s is just how flexible they are or where the flexibility actually starts on the Metcon 8. So with the Metcon 7, the forefoot was flexible. You can kind of see where they have put in this little groove for the forefoot to flex. But with the Metcon 8, the flexibility extends a little bit further into the middle part of the shoe. It's pretty flexible all the way until there. And that can make you feel like you're getting pitched onto your toes in comparison to the Metcon 7. But that's really me just nitpicking and comparing it to the 7s. If you were to compare these to a lot of the shoes out there, I'd still say that they're probably better to do your lifts in than 90% of the other training shoes out there. The React Foam is still responsive, gives you great power delivery without ever being mushy. The heel, like I said before, is inflexible. Power delivery is on point. If you're looking for a shoe that did not have an elevated heel to do your squats and deadlifts in, then I'd say that you really can't do any better than the Metcon 8, unless of course you're going for the Metcon 7. I had absolutely no issues taking these up to my 90% lifts, whether it was Olympic weightlifting or whether it was powerlifting movements. I felt almost as stable in these shoes as I normally do with a pair of lifters on. All right, so in conclusion, do I think the Metcon 8s are a worthwhile upgrade over the Metcon 7s? And to be honest with you, it just really depends on who you are and what you're looking for in a training shoe. And a lot of it also goes into what your foot looks like. If you had a more wide foot, then I'd say the Metcon 7s are still gonna be the better choice for you. If you had a more narrow foot, I think the Metcon 8s are actually gonna be the better choice for you. If you wanted something that was a little bit more flexible and easy to live in, then I'd say the Metcon 8 is the better shoe. But if you wanted something that was more game day focused and better to lift in, then I'd say the Metcon 7 is better for you. Another thing is, which one do you prefer the looks of better? I actually think the Metcon 7s have a better look to them than the Metcon 8s. So if you liked some of the colorways that were on the Metcon 7, I would still just recommend that you go buy those and just wait for something better to come out with the Metcon 8s. This is the first time ever that I think the change from the odd model shoe might not necessarily be an upgrade to the even model shoe. I still think the Metcon 8s are 
probably one of the best training shoes out at the moment, but when comparing it to the Mekon 7, the upgrade just might not be worthwhile to you. I'd recommend that you buy the Mekon 8 from a retailer that has a pretty easy return policy so that you can try them out, see how you like them, see how you like them compared to your Mekon 7s, and from there, you can kind of decide for yourself if it's worth the upgrade to you. I think they're great shoes, but I am not gonna be getting rid of my Metcon 7s anytime soon, and I'll probably continue to buy some of the cooler colorways that come out for the Metcon 7s. So if you guys have any questions about the Metcon 8, feel free to leave them in the comment section. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. And as always guys, thanks for watching.